It's Victory Day 2015, and Russia is parading its military across Red Square. Western leaders stayed away due to Russia's aggression in Ukraine, except for one who broke the boycott. Czech President Miloš Zeman is here, and his presence is warmly greeted by Russian President Vladimir Putin. When Zeman's supporters celebrated his election in 2013, controversy over his ties to Russia was already brewing. There were allegations his campaign was partly bankrolled by businessmen with links to the Kremlin. Lidí, kteří jsou nějakým způsobem navázáni na ruské okolí a na ruské finance, těch je v tom Zemanově soukolí hodně. Čili ten motiv, proč se kamarádit nebo přátelit, nebo proč být v určitém smyslu i devotní, by se dalo říct, nebo servilní vůči Rusku, je, že zatím je velmi jasně skrytý finanční zájem. These claims of financially driven Russian influence have never been proven, and the president's office didn't grant our request for an interview. But the Russia issue was soon overshadowed when Czech media said Zeman appeared to be drunk while viewing the country's crown jewels. His office said he was suffering from a virus. But placards recalled the incident the following year, when thousands of Czechs joined protests against Zeman. Other demonstrators called on him not to make deals with Putin after he'd criticized Western economic sanctions on Russia over its aggression in Ukraine. Proti Zemanovi protestuje, protože Zeman se odklonuje od lidských práv. But Zeman still had deep support among Czechs. At a rally in 2015, he caused many to cheer by taking a hard line against accepting refugees who were flooding in to other parts of Europe. The large majority of these elegant migrants are young, well-lived men. I ask myself, why these men do not fight for the freedom of their country against the Islamic state? Zeman's supporters often see him as a forthright politician, not afraid to cause offence by speaking his mind, and not unlike Donald Trump, whom Zeman has warmly praised. These characteristics were again on display at an event in Strasbourg in October 2017, when he described Russia's annexation of Crimea as something Ukraine should accept. If there is a dialogue between Russia and Ukraine, I think that there would be possible some compensation for Crimea in financial form. The comments led to official protests in Kiev. Zeman's five years at Prague Castle have been polarizing. His post as president is largely ceremonial, but he's used it as a platform for an outspoken brand of politics that has caused both outrage and delight.